Hi folks, I wanted to introduce to you our shift framework. This is a resource that we have developed to help students collectively come together in order to reframe a prompt they are entering into a generative AI tool such as ChatGPT. We think that part of the magic of ChatGPT is that it offers us an opportunity to work together to build better questions. So we're going to model this process for you and take you through our shift framework. The shift framework essentially asks a learning community to start their curiosity engine to get that prompt started to hone in on a detail. Again, remember the power of a tool like chat GPT is that you can re Fine, that prompt. You can keep building into that prompt to really get ChatGPT to follow your trail of inquiry towards the place you need it to get. The I is asking you to identify your context. The F is to frame your prompt from a new perspective. And then lastly, it's coming together as a class or as a small group and thinking about what's missing. What is it, again, that chat gpt needs us to do that's sort of a uniquely human frame of question asking of interrogating of uh, providing analysis of doing that synthesis so again uh, we think that chat gpt is really going to get us to tap into some of our human powered skills um, you know again that that prove to us that Part of the reason that learning is social is that we can co-create better questions when we talk them out. So ready to see an example of the shift framework in action? Let's get started. So kicking off our framework, starting our curiosity engine, friendship is something that uh, I know is talked about really across the school. So here we are asking chat GPT, show me a sample letter from one friend to another person they want to become friends with. Let's see what chat GPT comes up with. So the next step of our framework is the H to hone in on a detail. So I would be asking students, tell me what's a detail that you notice about what ChatGPT has provided in response to our prompt. Students are really likely to point out, hey, this letter is really formal and it also focuses um, you know, on how our friendship should be based on similarities. So I'm going to ask Ch chat GPT here, rewrite the letter, focus not on our similarities, but focus on us wanting to be friends um, because we have something to learn from one another. And then again, as a class, we'll review and see how does chat GPT respond to us honing in on that detail and asking it to, um, again, do that rewrite. So again, this is where there's a great, I think, SEL lesson. If we're, we're sort of seeing the assumptions that ChatGPT has about how a friendship gets started. Um, and I'd ask students, our I part of the framework is to identify the context. So based on that, perhaps they're telling me this is too formal for us. It's also a really long letter. So we're asking it, you know, um, make the letter less formal. We'll see how ChatGPT um, adjusts and we're also asking it to change the length to one paragraph and again students are going to suggest perhaps in this example can we have the tone actually be a little more humorous and let's see again what adjustments are made So what I love about this exercise is, again, it's a great opportunity for us as a class to talk about what are the assumptions in this language 
in the structuring of this letter, what assumptions are being made about friendship, right? Um, so the F is for us to frame, frame the task from a whole new perspective. So we're going to say, okay, can you write the letter, um, you know, to come from someone in grade seven? And let's see how asking it for a completely different perspective as its standpoint, um, as the creator of the letter, let's see what it comes up with now. The T, the final step in our framework, is to talk about what's missing. So as uh, my students would discuss this, they would probably, you know, we'd ask, like, how would you respond? Would you want to be this person's friend? Um, and students are telling me, nope, not super likely. So I'm just going to, for fun, ask chat GPT, can you respond to that letter politely declining the invitation? So we can see a little bit of a two-way conversation. And then based on this final response, I think there's a great conversation to be had with my students around what's missing here. Um, you know, how similar or dissimilar is this to informal conversation that you are having to the ways in which, again, perhaps on social media, you are communicating with one another? What is it that ChatGPT misses when it comes to understanding the nuances of communication, of connection. So again, a fun thing here is to say, all right, chat GPT, what are the top five reasons that people are friends? Um, and we'll look at this and then we'll compare it to the letters. And what I would point out to my students is, um, again, we're, we're seeing the word shared a lot, shared experiences, shared history. So I might actually just grab what ChatGPT has given me here as a list, and I might cut out some of the sentences and ask students independently to fill this in and compare our list of top five reasons that folks stay friends, compare it with ChatGPT's. Hope this was a helpful tour through our shift framework.